You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, just go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. I hope as you are watching this, you are drinking some of my housewives inspired wine. It is no filter wine. We have four fun cans inspired by Atlanta, New Jersey, Beverly Hills, and Salt Lake City. So you can stock up right now at nofilterwine.com. All right, guys, while love is in the air and you know that we are all single and ready to mingle, I just wanted to make sure that I kept you safe when dating because we know that there are a lot of F boys out there. We know that we're cutting out all of the low vibe guys that aren't meeting us on our vibration. So that's why me and my pals at Seeking, you know I'm a Seeking ambassador and I've been loving working with Seeking. I'm on Seeking.com trying to find that ideal man for moi and I'm sure you're going to find him too. But we wanted to give you 10 red flags that you should look out for when you're dating online because we need to make sure that we keep it cute and we keep it safe. So Here you go. These are the 10 that I've put together with my pals at Seeking. Number one, red flag number one, look out for unverified accounts. So one of the great things about Seeking is that you can actually get verified. I believe I'm verified on Seeking so that you make sure that this is an actual person. Their photos are real. They're not some catfish and you're definitely getting a quality mate. Red flag number two, you want to look out for an incomplete profile. We want somebody that's going to give us the time of day, right? So look for someone that has actually taken time to fill out their profile and give us some details as to what it is that they're looking for. Okay? I know that's right. Red flag number three, suspicious photos. We want to look out for stock photos. We don't want them to steal some photos from the internet. We don't want them to use somebody else's photos. We're not here for the catfish. We're here for the premium photos only Even when it comes to me, I try to stay away from even putting up professional photos because I don't want people to think that I'm a catfish. So I try to use like fun, real, unfiltered photos that I'll post to like my Instagram account. And that way, when on my profile, I don't look fishy and then other people can see, oh, this is a real person and they want to date me. Yes, please. Gentlemen, sign up. The door's right there. Get in line. Okay, red flag number four. You got to look out for guys that are too good to be true, okay? You want to find somebody that aligns with what you want and make sure that there's good compatibility, but you also want to keep your guard up and don't let the excitement get the best of you. So make sure you're listening to your intuition and make sure you're building like a good flow of conversation. Red flag number five. Too comfortable too soon. We don't want to get guys that are too pushy and push us into something that we're not ready for. We want to take our time. We don't want to send any nudes. We don't want to send any unsolicited intimate pictures. We want to get to know each other. We want to make sure that we're building a quality connection, okay? No sexual or inappropriate comments. We want to get to know each other. We want to build that foundation. There's other stuff and other places that we can go for, you know, a quick little quick deek, but we don't want that. We want quality connections on seeking, okay? Red flag number six. We don't want any guys or ladies or partners that have vague one-worded responses. We want somebody that's going to give us the time of day. Somebody that's going to give us a quality conversation. Red flag number seven. We want to make sure we are avoiding people that make excuses to not meet in person. One of my personal favorite things to do when it comes to like dating is I like to do like a pre FaceTime date. Um, Something I learned during quarantine when we weren't actually physically dating, I would do a lot of virtual dates. And then I realized, oh my God, this is such a time saver. And it helps you verify that the other person's real. You get to see what they look like over FaceTime. Um, But if they're avoiding a FaceTime and if they're avoiding meeting you in person, big red flag, stay away, clear indicator that they might be a catfish. 
red flag number eight, asking for money. Okay, we're not looking for a Tinder swindler. We're not looking, we don't want to end up in another Netflix documentary. So we want to make sure that they aren't asking us for money. And we want to make sure we're not asking them for money either. We want to keep this kosher. We want to make sure that we're building a connection, getting to know each other. And it's not a transaction. Okay. Red flag number nine, invitations or links to different websites. No, 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 no. We want to keep everything in the app. We want to keep everything on the website, on seeking.com, keep the connection there. And then when we're ready, we can maybe exchange phone numbers or find something when we feel comfortable and ready to take that next step. We want to make sure that we're safe and not getting fished, not getting spammed. We want to keep it cute. We want to make sure we're finding a quality partner. And the last one, the final red flag to look out for when you're online dating is deleting their profile before they go on the first date. That's a big red flag. You want to keep yourself safe. If they delete their profile, that's a clear indicator that something here is fishy. Something might be off. So the safest approach is just keep the conversation going on the Seeking app. Keep the Make sure that their profile checks out. Make sure you ask a lot of questions and get to know each other. That way you can tell that this is a real person. Maybe you want to talk on the phone. Maybe you want to try the FaceTime tip. Totally up to you, but those are our 10 red flags to look out for when you're online dating so that you're making sure that you're finding good quality matches and that you're staying safe because we want to stay safe. We want to be cute. So if you guys are ready to date up this year, you know I'm all about dating up and elevating my dating experience. You're going to want to join Seeking.com. Go to Seeking.com to sign up for your profile today. Join me. I'm on there. I've been chatting with some good guys. I've been chatting with some cutie patooties, and it's a good time to go. Seeking.com. I'm excited about today's guest. Um, He's been one of my favorites on Bravo. He probably stole your heart on Southern Charm, but that was before he weaved his way into Paige's heart on Summer House. He's currently on his Pillows and Beer live tour. Please welcome the author of Pillow Talk, What's Wrong With My Sewing, Mr. Craig Conover. What's up, Zach? Thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm excited. I've been excited about <coughs> coming on since I saw your uh, your video. Had me laughing and actually showed it to Paige too. Uh, <laughs> your blind review of the book was uh, quite entertaining and quite accurate. Can we can we give me pro- <laughs> like I feel like I predicted as I was reading the book. I was like, wait, I predicted this was the chapter about Naomi, and this is the chapter he broke up with Naomi. And and I, I like- finally found my pen. Yes. Did you find you found the pen next to the sewing machine? I found the pen. I found the pen. Okay, good. <laughs> so, I mean, wow. Law degree, podcast, pillows, storefront. Now you have a new book, Pillow Talk. Talk me, to, talk me through this. What was the decision to pivot into being an author, an Amazon bestselling author as of right now? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wow. That's the first time I've heard that. That's pretty cool. Look, I, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so, I had always wanted to write a cookbook, actually. You know, I learned to cook when I learned to sew in home ec class in middle school. And uh, it's always been a passion of mine. And that's kind of what our got, got our wheels turning about writing. And then someone came to me with this idea of writing a memoir. And I just, I thought it was silly because I was like, I just haven't lived that much yet. I don't have enough stories. And it was just quite humbling uh, of a pro- you know prepos- proposition. And they were like, just try it out. So anyway... Um, you know, we found a writer and started, you know, telling them my stories and basically with knowing that you could always edit it or take it out later, I basically just told him my whole truth. And by doing that, it turned into the project it is today and decided to just leave it how it, you know, how it was written. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't planning on it at all though. It just kind of, uh, kind of happened and it was about a year and a half ago. So it's pretty neat that people are getting to read now. Did you talk to Cameron or Shep since they had released books prior and get any tips or notes from them? You know, it was kind of a different book. Um, they, it was funny because they both had something to say about the audio book. Shep, <laughs> Shep had, uh, that's where Shep's advice came from. He's like, yeah, man, it's kind of this crazy, you know, he, he just had a lot of thoughts on reading the book, which I actually enjoyed, um, for the audio session. But other than that, I didn't really talk to anyone about it. I kept it pretty personal and 
uh, it was kind of just my like, you know, making it was like my penance to myself, like making amends to myself and really looking into the mirror for the first time. So <clears throat> I really was hoping that, you know, I know their books stay great, but I, like I said, it was just a different book. This was, uh, it wasn't never supposed to be a, this is what actually happened. It was supposed to be, this is what also happened. You know, we only film for four months of the year. So there's a lot that happens in those other eight months. And I thought filling in the gaps of that story would be, um, you know, would be nice. And in the book, you talk a lot about your relationship with Naomi and the dynamics behind the breakup and, you know, the dynam- dynamics behind the relationship as it was as you guys were together. Um, did you have to warn her about anything in the book? Did you have conversations with her or is she going to be surprised to read some of these things like we are? Yeah. So fortunately, she was um, interviewed for the book. Um, she talked a lot with my writer, which was important to me. I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have told the story um, as complete as I did if she wasn't um, involved at all. So the timing just worked out that we were in a good place. And uh, fortunately, because of that, you get to read what, you know, uh, you know, a pretty full telling of our story, because there's always two sides to every story, especially in a relationship and the truth so, usually somewhere in the middle. So the fact that our stories matched up actually blew my writer's mind. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, this would be a lot, lot different of experience if I hadn't talked to the major people in my book, which apparently that's how a lot of people do it. They just write the story and then they deal with the fallout after. So I was pretty comfortable in how I went about this. Was there any hesitation with anything you released or anything you were worried you might get judged for? You know, I mean, a lot of people thought it would be the Adderall thing, but the thing is, is, you know, I haven't taken it in three years. And so that shame kind of goes away. The shame is really when I was still hooked on it uh, and didn't want to admit it. You know, once you get out of it, then you're like, screw it. Like this, this is what happened. And hopefully my story can, you know, help other people. But um, so that was actually pretty therapeutic talking about that. Uh, I thought the network would be a lot more mad at me than they were just cause I mean, I knew that they were going to have to look at the book before, you know, it moved through the editing process, but they really surprised me by not really having a problem with anything. Um, you know, it's the first book I believe that talks about the casting process, um, at least as in detail as I did, which yeah. I think is a fun Easter egg because we always get asked, you know, how'd you end up on Southern Charm? How'd you end up on Southern Charm? You know, did you try out, blah, blah, blah. And it's just something I don't think we were allowed to talk about. And so telling that story, I think was pretty neat in the book. Um, but other than that, you know, I was I was a little nervous that my parents would be sad with, you know, the extent of the bullying. But I mean, they, they loved it, loved the book. and. Um, yeah, I was I was happy with that. So in the book, you do get into the Adderall addiction and you talk and you really relate it to an issue with procrastination. How are you? I'm a big procrastinator myself. I love to wait until the last minute to do everything because oh, yeah. under pressure, I thrive. Um, yeah. What do you do to like deal with uh, procrastination now, especially since you're not taking Adderall? <clears throat> I mean... It's a great question because I really haven't figured it out. And that's, I think just accepting that it's an issue and being like, you don't have to fix it overnight, but just give yourself a few days, you know, I mean, look, it's still the same thing. Like I have an ad for a clothing company that I love in the living room and I've just been putting it off over and over and over. And I just told Paige before coming on, I asked if she would help me with it. And I think for me, having a supportive partner that, I can ask to help me with it. And it's not like nagging or anything, but you know, when we're done here, she's going to be like, all right, Craig, I steamed gloves for you. Now you just have to put them on and do your thing. And it sounds silly because I, I really love how we explained the procrastination of the book because, you know, so many people like my mom doesn't have it. So for her, you know, telling someone just do it. Like she really doesn't understand why you, that doesn't work. Yeah. And it just adds to the overall stress because, you know, as procrastinators, we don't know why we're like this either. And there's like, there's science behind it. You know, yeah. it's basically the execution part of your brain, but you don't know any of that. And, um, 
And that's why when I found Adderall, I loved it so much because I was like all of a sudden the most, you know, proactive person. But um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. I think it's just a day by day thing and not. And my dad was like, look, Craig, if you stop spending so much energy trying to fix all of the things, basically make up for all the lateness on things and just put that energy into doing it in the first place, you know, great. But obviously we both know it's harder than that. Yeah. And in the book, you do, as you mentioned, talk a lot about the bullying that you faced in high school and kind of how that triggered anxiety and OCD and depression. Have you been able to work through some of those things, too? Yeah. And I think it really shaped me into the person I am today. I mean, that's the messed up part is that because of all of those terrible experiences and bullying, is one of the reasons I've been so successful on reality TV. Cause I'm like, you guys can say whatever Bring you it. want. You won't even come close, Bring you know, it. to what happened when I was little. And I had to self validate in high school. And, you know, once you, you know, truly to yourself that you like the person that you are and you're like, look, one day it's going to be okay. One day I'm going to make it out of this. Um, you know, that, that all shapes you into the person you are today. And I think, you know, that's why I, I'm, have so much conviction on standing up for people and speaking my mind. Um, and it led to kind of the empath that I am today. So, um, it's just crazy that the scars last. I mean, you know, that's what I was thinking about when I was signing my contract and I didn't, we didn't even have the internet really. We didn't have the internet bullying yet. So one of my big goals is to start, um, is to start doing more, you know, anti-bullying stuff and figure out a way to be like, look, just, make it through high school and you're going to be okay. Um, or maybe even helping out, you know, the popular kids or the cool kids, quote unquote, in school be like, Hey, you don't have to be afraid to go sit next to that kid at lunch. I know you want to, and I know you're scared about what your friends will say, but you know, you can change someone's entire life by just one act of kindness. So, um, it's nice that I have the history with it and maybe can do something with it. Now I did notice in the book in the picture section, we have a picture of you and Paige in the book. Now, you guys have only been dating for a little while. What motivated putting her in the book? <coughs> Are we Well, so when I finished writing, um, you know, it was early summer. So we had just, I mean, started to hang out. And even though, you know, you have high hopes in the beginning of any relationship you don't know what's going to happen and it just wasn't appropriate to write about it in this book yet yeah. and um or it wouldn't have been responsible to and fortunately i got to do the pictures later in the process like in the fall and i wanted to put in you know some easter egg um of page and i thought that was the best way that was actually the first picture you know we got drunk at kyle and amanda's wedding yeah. and she posted that and that was our first picture together and it's got a special place in my heart and um she actually read the credits for the audiobook too. So you'll get to hear some of Paige in the audiobook was another little thing. But yeah, it just wasn't, you know, we don't have an, we didn't have enough story at the time to tell. And I thought the picture was a good way to pay homage to her. So when she did post that on Instagram, everybody started to go because there was a little bit of speculation about whether or not you guys were actually dating at that time. What were you thinking when she posted it? Were you like, oh man, we're like Insta official now. People were like shipping you. They call you like mom and dad on Instagram. Yeah. Hey, I was happy about it. Cause what's funny is you're still so nervous during those phases that even though you've hung out for, you know, a couple months, you don't know if you're going to freak the other person out by posting a picture or yeah. if they will. And so it was something that we were both happy about. And I remember you know, she didn't tell me. And I remember like opening my phone the next morning and seeing it and just, you know, secretly being pretty, pretty happy and smitten about it. Now, I heard that you had mentioned at one of your uh, pillows and beer live shows that Paige and Sierra are going to be coming to Charleston. Why are they coming to town? Is there a special project in the works? Maybe, <laughs> maybe a spring oh, house? I wish. Um, well, you will see a ton of Paige on Southern Charm, which is yeah. great. We have the craziest season um, coming up. But she is going to come down for um, a lot of the spring, uh, like, you know, May and June. But it's be 
because we're actually, we, we have that time off. So we're not filming. So, you know, I've always wanted to live out of a suitcase and she's just getting so busy now, but we're trying, you know, fortunately after filming winter house, that was the longest we had ever spent together. And we came out of that house being like, wait, I don't know if I want to do like, you know, the long distance anymore. Cause this was really fun waking up next to each other every day. So I've been up in New York for like a week now and I got to go back for some stuff in Charleston, but yeah, we're, we're just basically going to, I'm building like a, like a pool and stuff in my backyard and just redid my kitchen. So she's going to come down and make it a little homier for me. And then Sierra does have a room in my house. So hopefully she'll be down too, but no, uh, no project just yet. Is Paige on tour with you? Has she been traveling with you in Austin? No, it just hasn't worked out uh, yet. I got to do one of their shows in LA, which was really fun. Her and Hannah's show. Um, but they just filmed their reunion when we the day we had our New York show. And mm. then I was maybe like going to ask her to come to Philly. But reunion, like, rec- like recovering from filming a reunion is always uh, a couple day process. So yeah. she'll be there one day. We just we don't know what show it'll be. Now, you also mentioned that you and Austin had a bit of a falling out after the whole Lindsay Sierra thing. Talk me through that conversation, because we saw it on Summer House where you were, you know, obviously we saw the fight between Danielle and Sierra and you were kind of trying to explain to Lindsay why, you know, what her and Austin did wasn't really cool and how it hurt Sierra's feelings what was the conversation like with Austin? Did you, you found out when you went on Summer House, right? When you were in New York, that's when you found out what had happened between Lindsay and Austin, right? Well, Paige was texting me. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, we had brought in my agent and like, he manages like, you know, our podcast. And we were just like, Austin just wasn't in a good place last summer. And it was, it had started like a couple of weeks before, um, and that was kind of the culmination of everything and it coming to a head. And when that happened, um, it was just like, look, I, and th- this happens to all of us. There's yeah. been times in my life where people had to cut me off and stuff, but I was just, look, the book was finishing up, like sewing down South store was doing great. And I all of a sudden had all of these employees and all of these teammates to be, you know, I was responsible for, and it just, I needed to give, I needed to cut Austin loose for a little bit. And, um, we just didn't talk. I mean, it was, it was pretty, he, he just had, you know, I don't know what was going on with him, but there was a lot of anger. And so we just didn't talk for like two months. And then, you know, we started filming Southern charm and, um, it was right when we were starting to amend our differences. So you'll get to see that all play out on the new season of Southern charm. But yeah, you know, some people, go through, you know, rough patches. And this was, uh, this was just happened to be one of his and it kind of stinks for him that now, you know, he's done a lot to improve from there and move yeah. on and amend all those relationships. And now it obviously all gets aired, you know, nine months later, which is a little tough, but yeah, now he has to go through it all over again. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever realistically see him dating Sierra or Lindsay long-term? Uh, you know, him and Lindsay have always had their like, you know, friendship, whatever it may be. Um, but theirs was always just more of a distraction from whatever they were doing, you know, in regular life. But I really thought that there was a chance that, you know, him and Sierra would end up together. Uh, obviously after winter house last year, it just wasn't the right timing. He had a lot to work through with, you know, his breakup with Madison, but you know, they just, you know, they just had so much fun hanging out with me and Paige. And obviously, selfishly, we would have loved for it to work out because, you know, we'd have two best friends dating, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't overthink it. Yeah. Now, did but I- there still is like I mean, there just still is. I was I was more upset. And he knows this is that even if they weren't going to date, they're still like, you know, not dating is choosing to not date is different than going and hooking up with someone in front of the other person. Like there's different tiers to this. And just because you're not going to date someone that's still like, you know, hurtful. So that was kind of my point to him. You were definitely a voice of reason in the house. I loved seeing you in the kitchen, like trying to explain to Lindsay as she's right. She's like, I just want to go out. And you're like trying to explain to her. You're like, but do you understand how like Sierra's feelings were hurt in the situation? (laughs) 
that was very comical to watch. That's well, it's just funny how fast things like switch on TV, you know, like, yeah. you know, whatever happened in the beginning of <laughs> summer house, people are all like burn them at the stake. And now yeah. it's like Craig's the voice of reason yeah. again. And I was like, man, this is a funny world to be a part of. Um, but I am glad because that's, I'm glad it was shown because that, you know, I am a lot of times like a problem solver and a fixer. And I do feel like I can relate to people. I just can understand people in different ways. And, you know, Lindsay and I have had a long friendship. Obviously that's been put on the rocks for like the last year, but um, yeah, I just, I, 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 I guess I'm happy it was shown that I was at least trying to, you know, walk her through, you know, the, the path of, you know, whatever people were feeling. So obviously you and Paige are still going strong, but having to watch it back, was it awkward seeing some of her earlier scenes with Andrea? And how did you like work things out knowing <coughs> you guys were both dating Paige? Um, well, I mean, look, I, I don't watch, I haven't watched my own shows in a long time, but I'm obviously aware of what happened. But, you know, Andrea was seeing someone all summer, Paige was seeing me and, they, you know, it was a good distraction for them in the house. You know, I can't get upset that, um, you know, I was the one that didn't want to, you know, make it official with Paige until, you know, for a couple months. And obviously it would be pretty hypocritical of me to, you know, basically our whole thing was, you know, you can do whatever you want. Let's just not, let's just be kind of respectful about it. Obviously being on TV makes those rules a little, <laughs> a little like harder, but I, I really wish they would have shown the the positive side of what it was because Andrea and I were great all summer. We were good friends. You know, I really helped him work through what he was going through and he helped me work through my relationship on Winter House. They just didn't show it. And I really hope that it would show that, you know, you can do this non-traditional approach to a relationship and things work out. You know, you don't have to do things a certain way just because everyone else says you have to. And, you know, Paige and I are in a really healthy relationship now. And as everyone got to see, we did not take, you know, the normal path, or maybe it's more normal than people care to admit, but it just, it, it worked. And um, I'm at least glad that you're getting to see more positivity now because the fact that they have our first date on camera and cut it um, because like, basically we were too happy on the date um and it would have like spoiled the rest of the season it's just so silly i'm like just show us having fun i mean come on well it's already spoiled because it's on social media yeah exactly exactly uh what was her rea- has she read the book and what's been her reaction to what she's read so far um she has and she i remember she was like i need the name and numbers of those bullies stat uh. um you know, she, she got a little teary eyed during there. And then I think she had to get a little pumped up to read the middle of the book, but I mean, that would be natural for anyone. And at the end of the day, it, I, I think it, I hope it'll help people. I've already gotten a couple really intense messages about people going through breakups now. And yeah. I think it was an important part of my story because, you know, everyone has those like middle twenties breakups where you think you found your person and it doesn't work out and it really is a mind fuck i mean yeah. excuse my language but that's what it is and like it's such a weird thing to have to work through and process and you know a lot of people don't like like i didn't talk to anyone about it because i didn't know what to say and so, so hopefully the middle of the book really helps some people going through that and then obviously um you know the end of the book is is happy and uplifting but how do you how do uh, your parents feel about the book? Obviously, in earlier in it, and as we saw in the earlier seasons of Southern Charm, you know we see you go through a bit of a identity crisis where you're trying to figure out your direction and do I do law school? Do I you know pursue reality TV? What's been their reaction so far? Uh, so I actually proud. it'll be fun to ask. So I'll tell you what what I've talked to them about. One, the first day they got it, my mom was like, "I've never seen your dad." like read more than you know five pages in the last 20 years of our lives and he read it in like one night or two nights she was like wow. he actually didn't put it down to the point where um i didn't have a chance to read it and then she was like this isn't like a competition but i read it in like one day and uh 
you know, I had sent him the e copy, but reading from the, you know, the hard copy is, is fun. Yeah. And they just, you know, they've told me how proud they are of me, but I haven't really asked them any details yet. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm happy I was so honest in it because now I don't have to find myself answering questions. Like, I mean, this happens a lot of times with reality TV that people don't have the full story. And you're like, how do I answer this question if you don't know this? And this was my chance to be like, look, here's the story. And whether you like it or not, at least I don't have to like second guess, you know, myself. Yeah. And I would imagine going on tour right now, people get to read the book, they get to meet you. So then they could chat with you about the book and kind of connect over that, that that has to be fun. Yeah. And uh, the live tour has been <clears throat> been great, too. And, you know, the goal has always been able to figure out a way to be have more interpersonal connection, you know, with every, you know, all the Bravo audience and everyone because and that's why the pillows have been so fun, the pillow parties in the store. Yeah, because, you know, I learned pretty quickly, you know, early on that, you know, people like to be better in person than on TV. And fortunately, that's, you know, evolved after being on TV for eight years. But um, I, you know, I still enjoy that. You know, I give everyone a hug and learn a little bit about them. And it's been, uh, it's been very flattering that so many people have been coming. So we do have some listener questions for you. Are you ready, Craig? Let's do it. Jay Denny wants to know, how would you describe Winter House and the new season of Southern Charm in three words each? Um, Southern Charm is crazy and explosive and fresh. I would say those are good. Um, <laughs> And then Winter House is whatever the opposite of repetitive is, because basically you get to the COVID rules were lifted. So we didn't, we, you actually get to see us go to bars and restaurants and stuff. So it's not as repetitive as partying in the house every single night. Yeah. Um, uh, romantic, because mm-hmm. you'll get to see me and Paige together. And fun because some of the new people are are really really good additions and i think the bravo universe will be really happy to see them did i hear that we're gonna have a couple of new bravo lebs joining the winter house uh there's a couple people that ring the doorbell and (laughs) uh make some surprise some surprise visits which actually i'm so happy that they took a chance and did that because it it really adds some fun yeah, surprises and layers to the show. And people love crossovers. I I mean, that's why, like, the Housewives all-star series that they're doing on, like, Peacock Works, and that's why people loved uh, Winter House, the first go-around, because it combines all of their favorite Bravo stars into a new setting. Well, I mean, and we weren't allowed for so long. Like, I remember I loved Road Roll, like, real oh, yeah. world. Like, you know, I mean, any show that had crossovers or even scripted shows, like some of the police shows would go yeah. to, like, you know, a new city. and. Um, you know, for so long, they just fought it because they didn't know how to handle it. But especially after Bravo Con, Con they saw that so many of us are That's actual man. friends. Yeah. Um, and I knew people would want to see it. So I'm glad they took a chance on Winter House. And now with Paige and I dating, it's basically like the multiverse, like the Marvel multiverse yeah. of Bravo, because everyone's on everyone's shows now. And of course, some haters are going to be like, you know, stay to your own show. But yeah. You know, there's a fun balance to it. And I think people are really, really enjoy it. Chelsea Stark Jones wants to know what your overall thoughts are on the glass getting thrown at Danielle by Sierra. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't think I've been able to formulate a right articulate response on it. Um, you know, things just came to a head when it did. And um, yeah, I I. Uh, I, I I'll have to watch to see what was what was shown because like I said I haven't seen it since uh since last year but I think hopefully you'll get Sierra's thoughts on it and yeah. Danielle's at the reunion and I'll let them work out their their stuff. Did anybody check on Danielle? It seemed like everyone's focus was on Sierra, um, but Danielle's the one that got a glass thrown at her. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't know what they showed, but everyone was. Um, it, I was surprised with how. Uh, frozen a lot of the people got at the table. I mean, look, yeah. I 
<laughs> for being so like dramatic, a, they all kind of just like did not know what froze. to do. You were yeah, the one that like, jumped I, in I, and you're like, let me break this up. Well, I went to like, you know, public school and there was fights all the time. And <laughs> yeah, I like, of course, you know, I, the yeah, the glass part of it, you know, added yeah. the, 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 the element that took away from what they were arguing because there's something to be said about you know, conflict or even physical conflict in the right um, setting. But obviously I think Sierra was a little bummed, you know, that happened, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I wonder if they showed me just, I started smiling when they first started to like yell at each other, just because I don't know, it was yeah. kind of like the adrenaline, but everyone else looks so scared. Well, um, everyone, everyone but, feels like Paige really stirred the pot in all of that. No, I mean, look, the thing is, is, and I think this is where they've gotten themselves in trouble is the creative editing this year is mm. just so outlandish that it's even hard to answer these questions now. And um, there was just so much left out in a lot of people's behavior this summer. Um, I mean, look, there's a reason I don't watch because I would just get too angry. Yeah. Um, so like, that's the, that's the tough part is that like, I really can't answer the question without like, it wouldn't make any sense. Right. Because yeah. you'd be like, you know, and the thing is, and if you start talking about things that were never shown, it, it, it usually seems that people can't. Yeah. Yeah. And people like, don't. So unfortunately there was, you know, it was, it was just a long time coming like, and, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I would pop in and pop out. It seems like I was there the whole summer, though. I know you're in I every other episode. I, I was... should have asked for a different. Uh, I should have asked for an episodic fee instead. I of... know. <laughs> an appearance fee. <laughs> but um, oh well. I know. I had the most anxiety over the fact that everyone at the table was wearing white, and there was just red wine flowing everywhere. I was like, "No, the white pants, not the white." Pants. I know. I know. Um, and then. I, Luke was like, please tell me it didn't get on my hat. And I was like, I think I kept your hat pretty safe. <laughs> yeah, Luke, your hat's okay. Um, Fredette Karen wants to know boxers or briefs? And which does uh, Paige I actually, prefer? I actually don't wear um, underwear. I stopped wearing underwear after high school. Really? Um, yeah, I just never saw the point. And I just, it drives Austin crazy. Um, but unless I'm wearing like, suit pants you know like really really thin like linen or suit pants then yeah i'm i'm usually free as a bird underneath it's, um it's, but if i did if i did it would probably be, be like boxer briefs but i just hated i don't know if i just had the wrong boxers or cheap boxers or what growing up but i spent all class growing up like pushing my boxers down and my pants and i just never wanted to to feel that again, I guess. You need Kim Kardashian to send you some skims. Do they make guy stuff? <laughs> I mean, no, but they're, they're, they feel like they could be pretty unisex and then they'll, they'll give you the little <laughs> tushy bump. Oh, yeah, a little lift. A little lift. Uh, Jailbird, Jailbird wants to know, how is the pillow business doing? Would you ever actually do a collaboration with Patricia? Because I know in the book you talk about, you gave us the real story about what happened when your partnership or collaboration fell through. Would you ever do something with her? Um, I, you know, the pillows are doing great. I mean, we're about to go, we're, we just launched our new spring collection and we've got something coming out every month. And then this summer we're launching our, our bedding line, which will be sheets and duvets and sleeping pillows, which is Ooh. a huge step that I'm excited for. Um, we'll actually hopefully be doing a collaboration with Paige this fall for, you know, more her aesthetic, like white and black pillows, which I think would be really fun. Um, you know, I don't, if Patricia ever wanted to do something, we would definitely give it a, give it a look. Um, you know, I, I think she's doing great on, on her own and, and I think maybe, yeah, I mean, nothing's off the table. We, we've got a great friendship and, um, you know, if I ever do like a series, named after like the cast members maybe i'll i'll bring her on to to give us her uh her touches some patricia couture aesthetic well if you are getting into pillowcases you do need to do like a silk or a satin one because it keeps the blonde from breaking and it keeps yep. everything nice craig if i could make any okay. if i can put a comment in the comment box that's my actually i i 
sometimes people give you suggestions that just are better than others and that I will actually store that moving forward and it, it you'll know when you yeah. see those cases that it came from you actually. Yes, I love that. And they're trendy. So you want to get with the trends. Exactly. Okay, last one. Gigi Angelique asks if you'd film your wedding to Paige. I know we're jumping ahead there, but can you, would you ever, if you were to get married, do you think that you would do it on camera since we've seen so much of your life over the past eight years now? Yeah, unfortunately we wouldn't. Um, I know it's, it's tough with more and more people doing it that, um, you know, and I know that we, we, there's a certain level of commitment that we owe to everyone, obviously for, for being on the shows and letting us watch, but you'll never see us do any, um, any big relationship milestones, you know, like I, when we became boyfriend, girlfriend, it was off camera when we said, I love you. Um, you know, if I ever proposed with a camera around Paige would laugh at me and say no. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, it's right for some people, which is great. But for us, you just have to, you know, we're really good at, you know, showing up and doing our job and then going home at the end of it. And some people aren't able to turn it off, but we're doing our best to keep, you know, some sort of normalcy and and half of our life. So um, you won't see that, but maybe one day you'll get to see a big like wedding party or something celebration or something that would be fun i'm here for that we'll figure something out all right guys pillow talk what's wrong with my sewing is on sale now so go to your nearest barnes and noble go to amazon stock up right now it's a great gift to give some of your bravo obsessed besties and craig and austin are also on their pillows and beer live tour this weekend they'll be in clearwater florida and fort lauderdale then they'll be heading to chicago philly new york boston and dc so get your tickets now at pillowsandbeer.com Craig thank you so much for chatting with me today thank you Zach thanks for reading the book and uh, maybe I'll come on before Southern Charm comes out and give you a few uh, spoilers I was reading this and then I had to I had to listen to the audio book because I was getting my hair bleached yesterday (laughs) and I I was like I can't focus with bleach on my head but I'll listen to the book I can't read it but I'll love that love that well it looks great thank you Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach or follow the show at No Filter with Zach. Craig, what is your handle if people want to go and follow you on the social meds? It's C.A. Conover and then Sewing Down South and Pillows and Beer are my three Instagram accounts. There you go. Pillows and Beer. Get those tour tickets. Buy Pillow Talk, guys. It's a good one. All right. I will. I'm going to go pick Craig's brain a little bit more and try to get some spoilers out of him. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Craig.